were you afraid when you found out that you were pregnant that you were going to lose your job? I mean, I was terrified. She states in her federal lawsuit that as soon as she emailed HR to alert them to her pregnancy, this is how a committee member responded to her email. It's classless. She says the company almost immediately terminated her insurance. It's like leaving the cult. You just described it as a cult. I'm not a yeah. cult expert. I would actually be very interested in somebody who is more of an expert on cults or high control groups to get their opinion. O'Connor is now suing. Federal law forbids discrimination based on pregnancy. I knew that I was basically going to be taking on these bullies. All right, O'Connor says she was offered a non-disclosure agreement and a financial payout, but she declined both. Over the last couple years, I've made a few videos on Dave Ramsey and his company, and I think it's safe to say at this point that we disagree on at least a few things. A couple of them being his anti-remote work policy. You gotta go in and work, he doesn't like remote work. And I want to work from home, where I don't really work. But I'm at home, and I still collect a check. People that are remote workers. I mean, they have really jumped into the whole sweatsuits and Rocky Road ice cream. The worker is now demanding that they work from home. Yeah, well, those people are going to lose. Another one being his anti-overemployment opinion, where he said if you're working more than one job at the same time, you're a thief. By the way, I've got three of those work-at-home jobs now, which means I'm now stealing officially from that employer. That's called stealing, okay? That's a lack of integrity, to say the least. You're a thief and you're supposed to be giving full-time effort and your company thinks you are and you're knocking down another full-time job and neither company knows about it. So that's dishonorable. If they don't know about it, you are lying. Here's an alternate sentence. These folks are emboldened by a new website called Overemployed. It aims to rally workers around the concept of lying to your employers so that you can hold down two jobs and make more money. If you've got people working in an office like we do at Ramsey Solutions, I promise you people aren't knocking down two full-time jobs while working here. Finally, his most famous policy that I very much disagree with is his righteous living policy, where he can arbitrarily decide if you are living a righteous enough life to work for him. Now, one example of this is when one of Dave Ramsey's employees went to HR to disclose that she was pregnant and unmarried. She was in a committed and dedicated relationship. She was still fired because she was not married. Yeah, she was terminated after she disclosed to the company that she was pregnant and not married. Not only is he widely known for his tough talk on finances, but also for insisting that employees follow his biblical principles. Dave Ramsey speaking to staff, mocking employees who engage in premarital sex. He's gonna go on stage in front of 900 of my team members and call me stupid. I don't agree with the righteous living core value. Well, why did you call me stupid? Ramsey says in the audio, if you don't agree, you have no place in his company. If you don't like that, this is your cue. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. It's just interesting to me because, again, Dave Ramsey's company is not a religious institution. It is not a nonprofit organization. It is a private for-profit that is bound by all of the other civil law and regulations that other companies are bound by. Having said all that, I've noticed a change recently in the type of content that Dave Ramsey and the personalities have been uploading to their channels recently. For the first time ever, it seems like the personalities over at the Ramsey company are starting to understand how difficult it can be to be an employee. I'll give you an example of what I mean. After after the mass layoffs at Google, they uploaded this video. Google really laid off employees like this. In this video, they give a quick TLDR of the Google mass layoff and a reaction to a TikTok video of an employee finding out that they've been fired by being locked out of their computer. And to my surprise, they actually seem to sympathize with the people being laid off. Here's another example of what I mean, why these corporate layoffs are immoral. This is what you do if you're a real leader. Lots and lots and lots of clear, open, authentic communication. Then the second thing is you do not lay people off in order to line your own pockets. That's morally wrong. It's the difference between I'm on a Zoom and I had no warning and all of a sudden, bam, I'm not sitting there with my leader able to process information and ask questions. I've just been hit right in the forehead and there's nothing I can do about it. Are they starting to have a change of heart? Are they starting to get it? There's just something about this that makes me go, I'm not buying it. Let me show you this video, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to compare it with some of their older, much more harsher clips. Well, you don't have a right to tell people what to do. I got a right to tell them whatever I want to tell them. They freaking work for me. 
You're willing to change jobs, to quit, to start over, to maybe put yourself in a position where you got to scramble all because you don't want to leave the house. So it'll be very nice for you to see how nice and sympathetic they're being here in their previous videos. Yeah, this is an employment at will state, which means if I decide I don't like people with green eyes, I don't have to hire you. Yeah, there's no eye color discrimination laws. Die! So I woke up to this really ominous text from my boss, and I honestly had no idea what it was going to be about. So I called her the minute I woke up and saw this, and she told me to check the news and my email. So I rushed downstairs to find out that I had lost access to basically everything. I couldn't log into my email or even check my calendar. I called my boss back, and we just sobbed over the phone because she was also finding out about my layoff for the first time today, too. Absolutely. That does suck to find out that you've been fired that way. You're about two and a half years behind the curve now. This has been happening for a long time. When it first happened, it was new and novel, and it put everyone into an outrage of going, oh, wow, how did this happen? I got fired via Zoom, and it was so impersonal, or I got locked out, or I was on vacation and found out I got laid off, and whatever, and it was new, and it was heartbreaking, and it was hard for everyone. And then it just kept happening, and it became a side effect of mass layoffs with people working remote. But they're acting like it's the first time it's ever happened. This is the worst. Another guy says that he went in at 4 a.m. Found out when I went to work at 4 a.m. to finish up an important analysis, and my badge didn't work. One thing they didn't talk about are why companies do this. If certain employees have access to certain information or certain permissions to things, they can cause a lot of damage. So sometimes they just lock you out and tell you later. There's a clip of George talking about how remote employees are basically not entitled to anything because they're just employees. Don't gripe. And, and act like the evil corporate man wants me back in the office because he needs to see his cubes filled. This is nonsensical snowflakery. Duh. That's a great word. I like that. Yeah, so what it comes down to, Ken, is you're not entitled to anything. So, George, I don't understand that reaction face at the beginning of the year. Like, oh! <gasps> Wow, she got laid off and found out because she was locked out, and then here you're like, the thing about work send is, send them to the salt mines. You can't choose your parents, but you can choose your employer. Imagine Ooh. that. You can just choose to find a place that doesn't suck. And then they start to go into sad mode. And let me just play some more for you, because I'm just not buying it. This is a really rough rejection. So you need to grieve this. You need to understand that while it may not be personal, it feels personal. Let's go get it out of our system. Friends, family members, if you got to cry some, fine. You know, the point is, let's own it, that it hurts. When you would just keep treating people like units of production, you don't care for them, you don't treat them like they've got a heart, then uh, you're going to have a revolt. Well, in these publicly traded companies, Ken, a lot of them are just beholden to the shareholders. So when Ken and George sit there and act surprised and sad, this is the worst. I've seen what you think of your people. We actually cared about you when we were firing you. I've seen what you think of employees that take control of their own life. It's definitely not this Google video, that's for sure. It just makes me go back to that time when you roasted an employee who quit their job because their company changed their remote policy and that employee still wanted to work remote and you went, I can't believe someone would quit over having to go into the office and have a meeting. Those people are spoiled. Oh, here's a word, Joe. Privileged. Or they're just idiots. And if you don't like that, stop turning this into they don't value me. It's a boomer who's old and outdated and they just want to control me. I am all for you deciding what you want to do, but good luck. Give me a freaking break. By the way, 13% of people out of a recent survey said they're prepared to leave their job uh, if they're going to be forced to come in. Okay, great. I'd like to know the 13% in their situation. They are either financially flexible and able to do that or be their idiots. Because if you're going to walk from a situation that otherwise is a good situation for you professionally, all because you don't want to go to the office and you want to work in your sweatpants all day long, I got no problem with people working in their sweatpants, Joe. I'm not anti-sweats. I love a good pair of sweatpants. This is about you being a functional member of society and you can't just like, I'm taking my toys and going home. Tough. Don't act like you've been dishonored like like some boomer doesn't value you because they want you to come to the office for a freaking meeting. What's wrong with you? Grow up. Hey, by the way, somebody go, oh, Kent's a boomer. No, I'm not. I'm Gen X. I, you give everybody a trophy, then everybody goes, well, I don't want to come into work. You can't make me come into work. Well, you're right. I can't physically force you to come in, but if you don't come in, I'm going to fire you. Which companies can do and will do. By the way, this is a separate rant. Employees are quitting instead of giving up working from home. Bull crap. The drive to get people back into offices is clashing with workers who've embraced remote work as the new normal. I hope, Madison, that these are people who have financial wherewithal and lots of options. But something tells me that's not the case with all these folks. Quick pause. You, you can't just tell companies, yeah, 
I'm only going to remote work. And if they change that, you can't just go, no, you can quit. And she quit. Good on Portia. Good for her. She quit. But if this is some of you that are watching this and you go, I really liked working from home. I want to work from home. And I don't like it when they make me come into meetings. Let me tell you something. This is an attitude issue. Listen to this. There's the notion that some bosses, particularly those of a generation less familiar with remote work, that's a nice way of saying older people, are eager to retain tight control of their minions. Listen to what she says. They feel like we're not working if they can't see us. It's a boomer power play. It's a boomer power play. This is what irritated me. And this is all I'm going to address. You work for the company. They sign your paycheck. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. You see what I mean? now um the sympathy at google for 20 years and he was laid off via email no face-to-face -face conversation it's bad business yeah. forget bad human behavior you want to know why there's an anti-work movement this kind of nonsense just seems so far out of left field but that's pretty much all the sympathy that the google employees get and then they take the remaining amount of time in this episode to talk about how great ramsey solutions is and how they won't treat you like google because they care about you so we're going to shine the light on here at ramsey solutions because um we care about people here we care about our team we care about you and you can work in a place that values you even if they have to lay you off in a place where they care about you they'll treat you well thankfully Ramsey has never had to lay anyone off yeah. in the history of this place, which is pretty amazing. They say they've never had a layoff at Ramsey Solutions, which may be true, but that's probably just because you fire everyone for dumb stuff instead. The tone and demeanor of the previous clips, I think, show their true opinion. And this is just virtue signaling to stop being roasted in their own comments. You'll see comments like this from TC. Glad y'all are finally catching on. Don't be loyal to a company ever. This video, they're only focusing on how it was emotionally painful for people to find out that they were let go by being locked out of their account. That's it. They're not saying don't be loyal, okay? They're not catching on, I don't think. Let me just play you a clip of their Moral Code podcast that Dave Ramsey has on his website. We have a moral code of conduct at our office. I fire people if they have extramarital affairs. The hilarious thing is I put that on Twitter and people go, won't you get sued for that? Uh, no, you're allowed to discriminate against infidelity. Well, you don't have a right to tell people what to do. I got a right to tell them whatever I want to tell them. They freaking work for me. But he cares about you. We care about people here. We care about our team. We care about you. Don't forget about that yeah this is an employment at will state which means if i decide i don't like people with green eyes i don't have to hire you i don't have to keep you anymore yeah there's no eye color discrimination laws Die. now i would never do that i'm not that arbitrary and i'm not that mean or unkind i don't know you fired a lady for getting pregnant i guess assert dominance or something but but i listen if your spouse can't trust you what makes you think i can trust you well you ought to be forgiving i'm forgiving i forgive the person but i you can forgive a dog that bites you but don't stick your hand out again stupid he is saying by this lady getting pregnant out of wedlock that she is a dog that bit him like you see what i mean like it's just disgusting when they say we care about people here and you can work in a place that values you you can't have all this other stuff up on your company site and in your other videos and then have me believe any word that you're saying that has to do with you understanding employees anymore well i went on linkedin and i found some videos and pictures of what it's like to actually work there and you guys tell me if this is what you think caring about an employee looks looks like. Our HR team celebrates every time someone new gets hired. Please don't make me walk into that on my first day at work. Okay, here's another one. So on Fridays at Dave Ramsey's company, our teams typically make time to connect and build trust through, you guessed it, games. What a great way to waste everyone's Friday afternoon. I'm sure all of these people in this office wish they could just go home early instead, but no, we have to flick this paper trash. <laughs> and by doing this, I feel so much more connected to my employees and coworkers and bosses. Another thing they have at the Ramsey Solutions Company is a thing called Team Time. This one goes out to all of my software developer subscribers because this is what it's like to be a software developer at Dave Ramsey's company. 
Catch the ball, and it's your turn to talk because we're five. So you get games at lunch. I, no thanks. I'd rather leave the office. If I have to be in an office, at least let me leave other than the time I get to leave for the day. But no, you can stay inside and play games at lunch. Meetings that are actually productive. Feeling accomplished at the end of the day. I mean, as long as you don't get pregnant out of wedlock, I mean, you, you should be good, right? Don't you guys just want to work as a dev there now? You can throw the little volleyball around and... Ah, oh, yes. Uh, so the, you, you might have heard of the Super Bowl. It's coming up here pretty soon. But have you ever heard of the Ramsey Flip Cup Challenge? Oh, here's another one they brag about. How does hot chicken and video games sound for a team lunch? There was no work agenda. Like, this is why you leave the office to get away from that garbage. When your team works really freaking hard, it's a joy to celebrate them. So you give them spicy chicken. Oh, they get to play what looks to be Mario Kart. Only rated G. Family-friendly games at the Ramsey office for us. None of that Elden Ring or any of that mature sinful stuff, okay? This is what gets me. Some HR person got to business expense money to buy this stupid little decoration just so that they could put it on LinkedIn and brag about it like they think this is something that software developers and people actually want. Oh yes, and last but not least, I found a little TikTok of Ken Coleman clicking his heels together. I'm just a regular employee driving a regular car. I'm one of you. So Ken and George and Dave and everyone else there, is that what caring about employees looks like? I think in every single scenario, I would still prefer to be the Google employee that got laid off because number one, uh, that's a nice looking severance package. And number two, you got Google on your resume. So, I mean, what's Dave Ramsey on the resume going to do for you? <laughs> that's miss me with that fake ass sympathy. Okay. That's all I got to say. Anyways, guys, this has been your quarterly Dave Ramsey update, where we take a look at all of the ridiculous things they say. And in this specific instance, I just couldn't put my finger on it, but I just wasn't buying it. Seen too many other videos where it seems like they really don't care about the employee. And then suddenly they do. Something's just not jiving. If you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button, click that subscribe button. If you'd like to see me take on the corporate world some more. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the next one.